Well, TF2 isn't doing anything new at the moment, so why should I do something for TF2? Hey guys, what's up, and welcome back to a brand new video. And let me just make this loud and clear for you. 2016 was not a good year for gaming. Sure, there was a lot of great games, but overall, it was a crash and burn year. So many games, so disappointing, and they all had so much potential, but they all crashed and burned. And honestly, with games like Mass Effect Andromeda, this year could possibly be the exact same, but hopefully not. Now, indie games, from my personal opinion, are gems in the rough. Sure, you got a good bunch of stinkers, but at the same time, you have the most potential in indie games for finding something new and original. Take, for example, uh, Hollow Knight. The graphics are incredible. They're not over the top, like stunning, but they are her dark and gritty. But at the same time, you got characters that look so adorable. On the outside, you got this really deep, dark, scary world that's very dark and grayish, but on the exact same time, you got all these charming and cute characters that make you want to stay and enjoy what you're experiencing. The gameplay is tight and on edge. Everything has been fine-tuned to your liking. It is an incredible game. And guess who bought it when it was only $11 during the Steam Summer Sale? Guess what? That's me. I am a genius with my money. I buy everything. And then we got beloved indie classics like Bad Rats. I, I, got, I got it for $0.54 cents during the Steam Sale. It, it, it wasn't even worth that, to be honest with, with you. The graphics, beautiful. Gameplay, um, not so beautiful. The soundtrack... I wish I could turn it off. Overall, I rate the game a 2 out of 10. We'll buy again. Then you got an actual good game. You know, Rivals of Aether. Oh, I I'm sorry. I gotta apologize to all the Bad Rats fans out there. They're probably gonna hound down my door and kill me. I'm sorry you like such an incompetent excuse for a game. I I'm sorry. Anyways, back to Rivals of Aether. Wait, wait. wait. Is it Ether or Aether or what? Great game, by the way. Clearly based on one of the first ever like competitive esports games, Smash Brothers Melee, of course. And it obviously shows the love and dedication they put into it. And the characters aren't just like Smash clones. No, 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 no. They're actually unique. And it's actually interesting to try them out for the first time. You got little whale things that can teleport themselves using puddles and... Uh, beetle things that can create giant pillars of rock. It's it's all really weird, but at the same time really cool And the game was definitely built with like a competitive esports scene in mind Because most of the characters are built around building crazy combos and generally making you look like a badass And plus they have Ori from Ori in the blind forest coming out as a DLC character sometime this summer So I'm always excited for that as well if you're looking for more Smash Bros like content Well, this game has it just Go on ahead and play all you want. Oh, and I almost forgot. This game lets you mess with the hues of the characters to make it almost completely customizable. And honestly, it's adorable. I, I, I love it. I wish they could implement a feature like that in Smash Brothers, but we know that can't really happen. And then you got the long, ever-expanding list of games that I haven't got around to playing yet, like Night in the Woods or Pyrie, both looking incredible. And don't forget games like Hat in Time, which I hope picks up on where Ukulele left off, because otherwise that'd be pretty tragic. And you got games like Nidhogg. Remember Nidhogg? That was pretty cool. Well, I didn't think I needed a sequel, but you know, you never know. Finally got a release date for Cuphead, and that only took like, what, four centuries? And a couple like, skip millennia? Well, well it, it's something at least. And honestly, with more and more indie companies finally starting to make games, and the fact that Steam basically releases anything now, it's honestly a great future for indie games. Now usually, I end the videos in a super depressing note because I have to talk about Valve, but honestly, with, this is the one time where Valve's acceptance of anything into the workshop, it's amazing. Anyone can make games now. Now that's not always a good thing, but but still, it's it's great that more and more indie games are coming out frequenter and frequenter, and I get to play them. As always, what do you guys think about it? Tell me in the comment section below, and I'll get round to it. 